Today, Ippenburg is a residential area of the city of Den Haag. Back then, it was an airbase, and that airbase came under attack by the Germans in May 1940. It was part of an ambitious plan to capture The Hague and complete the conquest of the Netherlands in one day. What was supposed to be a German victory became a Dutch victory. How that'll happen, you will learn in this video. In this video, I will talk about the battle for Den Haag. Stay tuned. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. And if you're new, I'm a Dutch history teacher. My name is Stefan and I'm hustling history for you. If you find it interesting, consider subscribing and do not forget to hit the notification bell. Let's start. The German plan of attack was as followed. Led by Lieutenant General Graf von Sponeck, around 10,000 men would take part in the assault on The Hague, the governmental city of the Netherlands. Half of them would land here at the airbase of Ippenburg and others would capture the other airbases, Falkenburg and Ockenburg. After all these three airbases were captured, the Germans would make their advance on The Hague. When these three airbases were in German hands, reinforcements would be flown in and after that they would launch their attack on The Hague and capture the Queen, the Dutch government and the Dutch High Command and therefore complete the conquest of the Netherlands in just one day. The whole operation was somewhat of a gamble and if the Germans would fail in meeting their objectives they had to hold out until relief was coming. Supreme Dutch Commander General Winkelmann he took an attack on The Hague into account after witnessing the German invasions of Denmark and Norway. Ippenburg was defended by the 3rd Battalion of the Regiment Grenadiers and they had six armored cars. On the early morning of the 10th of May 1940, the attack on Ippenburg began. After a short bombardment, 500 German Fallschirmjäger paratroopers landed at the airfield. However, their pilots had become disoriented. And as a result of this, the Fallschirmjäger landed too far from their objective and were also too scattered. And so they weren't able to capture the airbase quickly. A quick capture of the airbase was therefore off the table and the Germans had to find the quickest way to the airfield to capture it. Now as for the Dutch defenders, their shock was big. From one moment to the other, they had entered a war zone. Nevertheless, they came into action and with their machine guns and their armored cars, they fired on the incoming German planes. Soon after the paratroopers had landed, eight Junker GU-52 planes landed on the airstrip but instead of being welcomed by their comrades they were welcomed by a barrage of dutch machine gun fire and the dutch shot many german planes ablaze the next batch of 17 planes barely stood a chance and soon the whole airstrip was filled with burning wreckages the german planes they hovered above the airfield because they weren't able to land on the airstrip some planes did land but weren't able to get back up again in other words the battle of Ippenburg had become a total chaotic mess the german commander von Sponing, for example he had to land here at Ippenburg, but instead of that he had landed at Ockenburg and he therefore lost grip on the situation. At 700 hours, the Germans regrouped and together with their flown in reinforcements, 800 men in total, they managed to capture the airbase building and the Dutch commander of the 3rd Battalion of the Regiment Grenadiers had to surrender. However, the Der German positions were far from certain. The area of The Hague had transformed into a chaotic battle scene. Apart from bombings on the airfields, also the Alexander base in Den Haag was bombed, in which 60 to 80 Dutch cavalrymen, as well as over 100 horses, perished. The airport of Valkenburg was captured quickly, but since parts of it were still under construction, many German transport planes that had landed weren't able to get back up again and block the airstrip for further landings, rendering the airfield useless. At Ockenburg Air Base, the German airborne troops landed too far from their objective, just like we saw in Ippenburg, but did manage to capture it. Yet German commander Grafelsponek he knew the situation was dire because Dutch reinforcements were on their way. Already on the same day of the German attack, General Winkelmann drafted plans to recapture the air bases. And the Dutch learned about the German plans by documents they found in two crashed German planes. 
One had crashed in a street in Den Haag and another one near Valkenburg. As a result of this, the first Dutch Army Corps had to defend the city and a line of defense around the city was set. The Dutch of course didn't know more airborne troops were on their way. There weren't. And also they didn't know that the Germans had already abandoned their plans to capture Den Haag. Back to Ippenburg. The Germans, they realized that after capturing the airstrip, it wasn't possible to advance to Den Haag. It came now down to self-preservation. At 10 o'clock, the Dutch undertook a counter-offensive, which failed. However, when Dutch artillery came to the scene, there were new chances. Reserve Second Lieutenant Maduro, he attacked a villa north of the airbase where the Germans were hiding in and managed to capture 11 German paratroopers. After achieving this breach in the German defense, the Dutch moved further and they captured large amounts of German equipment and weaponry. We could be jealous of their equipment, there was no lack of anything, as a result we had better weapons now. So much had been captured that each group eventually had a German heavy or light machine gun. Those weapons were excellent. Later that afternoon, Ippenburg was back in Dutch hands. Some Germans held out at farms, but eventually these were mopped up. The remaining Germans retreated to Overschiet. The same day, the airbase of Valkenburg was also recaptured by the Dutch. The Germans they retreated to the town of Valkenburg that caught fire because of Dutch artillery shelling. Eventually, the remaining German troops they fled to the dunes and they held out there till the Dutch surrender. Also the German troops located at Ockenburg, they realized that their chances to break through to Den Haag were next to nothing. Between 7 and 8 in the morning, Dutch planes bombed the airstrip and after that Dutch artillery took it over. Von Sponek and 300 of his men retreated to the nearby forest. Ockenburg was retaken that afternoon. Von Sponek was ordered to move to Overschie. And so he did. Now the Dutch, they had plans to attack Overschi. However, these plans were cancelled when the Dutch had to move to Dordrecht because there the Germans had crossed the Moerdijk bridges. Some smaller units did attack Overschi, but these Dutch attacks were repelled and the Germans, led by General von Sponek, held out till the Dutch surrender. All in all, during the Battle of Den Haag, the Dutch suffered 500 deadly casualties. The Germans, the same amount. Also, 800 Germans were POW'd and transported to England before the Dutch surrender. The battle showed both the strengths and the weaknesses of the Dutch army. They were effective in bold, smaller scale actions led by dedicated officers. However, when it came down to large scale attacks and the coordination of larger units, this exposed the weaknesses of the Dutch army of 19. 40. The Germans, they had a clear mission, but they were hindered by orientation errors and the Dutch anti-aircraft fire. I hope you liked this video, leave a like and a comment and consider of supporting me. You can do this via Patreon or PayPal. I covered more battles during the German invasion of the Netherlands. So if you want to learn more about the Battle of the Grebeberg, you can click right here. And if you want to learn about the Battle of Rotterdam that also involved paratroopers, go click it here. Thank you so much for watching and cheers from Ippenburg, Den Haag.